Hello and welcome to West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. I'm Donna Polk, Admissions Counselor Senior, and I'm happy to welcome you here to take a look around at our fabulous facilities here on our campus in Lewisburg, West Virginia. Come on in, we're gonna take our first stop here at the Student Center. The Student Center is considered the heart of WVSOM. Here to my left, you will see the O Cafe. The O Cafe provides breakfast and lunch for our students Monday through Friday. They also provide all food services for any campus events that we host. One thing that you will find here at WVSOM is that a lot of our buildings are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So one thing that is great about our campus is that we have a lot of study spaces that students can utilize in a lot of different ways. We have, to my right, you can see our quiet study spaces. You're able to get some of the study carols. We have couches. All of this is available for you to utilize and study in the modality that you most prefer. This building also houses our student activities office and our SGA offices. So while you're here at WVSOM, you're gonna to wanna to take some time for yourself and relax and be able to just take a breath from studying. So we do have a student lounge located in this building and you have pool tables, foosball, couches, televisions. It's just a place for students to gather and be able to take a minute to relax and refresh before getting back to working on your coursework. Here on the second floor of the Student Center, we have our campus store, which offers your textbooks, your equipment that you need, and also that fun swag that you're gonna to wanna to pick up. Here on the second floor, we also have our conference center. The conference center is utilized for a number of events here on campus. We host our white coat ceremony here. We also host special speakers on campus. We also have a talent show called Follies All right, welcome to the Clinical Evaluation Center, also known as the CEC. Hi, I'm Ryan, admissions counselor here at WVSOM. Um, this building is where students learn clinical skills. Uh, they do that through um, standardized patients and uh, robotic simulators. So if you follow me back. part of the building is where students have encounters with standardized patients. Standardized patients are basically actors who we've hired to come here and pretend like they're sick. So we have 24 exam rooms like the one that you're looking at and these exam rooms are all fully stocked with the same items that you would find in a doctor's office or in a clinic. The rooms have cameras. You can see up on the ceiling there are cameras. So any encounter that a student has with the standardized patient is filmed. So the students have access to the recording after the fact. They can see what they did right or wrong. The uh, building is set up so there are two hallways. You can see there is an outer hallway as well as an inner hallway. That is so the patients and the students can actually exit a different door than the other, so they're not really necessarily crossing, crossing paths when they're outside of the room. Um, these exam rooms are also used for our second years. Um, our second years have a student-run osteopathic clinic every winter. Um, so for about 10 weeks, our students actually get to see real patients who are community members that, um, that it's been recommended by their physician to actually come here and receive treatment from our students. All right, typically these encounters um, happen a lot during a student's first year. Um, and then in the second year, students have a lot more encounters with the robotic simulators. And that is where we'll head to now. All right, so down this hallway is our simulation area. Most of these rooms that you'll, you'll pass actually have at least one simulator in them. Um, we actually have over 20 robotic simulators um, 
in this part of the building. We also have TASH trainers, which are body parts that can be used for a particular medical procedure. Um, so if you follow me down this way, first we'll enter the obstetric um, simulation room. We have a couple uh, birthing simulators. Um, these are really neat because they can actually simulate a live birth. The births can be um, simple or they can be very complicated. Most students will actually get uh, an experience like this before they go out on rotations. I think most every student will actually get to deliver a baby from one of these simulators. And we also have the infant simulators as well. So this is our emergency room uh, simulation area. We ha typically have about four simulators in here at one time. Um, most of our simulators are more of a high fidelity simulator. Basically that means they're a little more high tech. Um, you can do quite a bit of medical procedures that you can do on an actual patient. A lot of these simulators, you can uh, check their vitals. You can see their uh, vitals up on the, the screens, uh, the monitors. Uh, most of these simulators, you know, they're, when they're turned on, their eyes are blinking. Um, their eyes can react to light. You can run an IV. You can intubate a lot of these simulators. They typically will have heart and lung sounds. Some of them are more of a trauma simulation, just like this guy right here, his name is Caesar. Um, he's one of our trauma simulators. We actually take him out of the building um, into um, other areas throughout the state and let students run um, medical disaster situations. We've had him in a, a mock coal mine. Um, we've had him in the forest um, simulating a logging disaster. Um, this guy is actually water and dust proof. So um, a lot of these simulators are very high tech. Um, we also have crash carts. We've got the curtains to block off the area to simulate a rural um, hospital emergency room. And if you come this way, so this is actually a control room. Um, so we control both the, um, the OB simulation room and the emergency room with uh, this control room. The simulators are controlled through the laptops, um, so our nurses can actually um, change the, uh, the vitals of the patient from the laptop. They can, they can hear what's going on in the room. Uh, the simulators can speak and say certain things, but our um, our uh, nurses can actually speak for the simulator through the microphones. Um, so this is a really fun way to learn. If you'll come back out into the hallway, um, for all of the other rooms other than the OB and the emergency room, uh, the simulators are actually controlled by laptops out here in the hallway. Uh, but it's the same setup. Um, our nurses can actually see the students, but the students can't actually see our staff out here in the hallway. Um, so that's the simulation area. Now what I'll do is go take you to the, uh, the grand hall. All right, so finally, we are in the grand hall of the CEC. Uh, this room is used for quite a few different things. First of all, it's used for lectures and labs. Um, also, most of our courses have a team-based learning component added in, uh, where students will actually get material to read outside of class before they come. And then actually when they get here, they'll uh, get in small groups and actually do uh, quizzes, you know, maybe by themselves and then with their group. Um, so we try to make sure that there's plenty of teamwork going on in class um, and not so much just, you know, students working by themselves. Um, another really cool thing we use this room for is for virtual reality. We actually have virtual reality goggles that our students can use to actually simulate and run 
clinical scenarios without actually involving real patients. So as you can see, the Clinical Evaluation Center offers some of the most hands-on experiences you'll get while at WVSOM. Hey guys, my name is Sheldon Mullins. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. And we are standing in our technology building, which is the home of our two lecture halls. We're gonna walk in to year one classroom and have a look. Here is where you will report to for every single lecture here on the campus of so WVSOM. All lectures in here are recorded so you can go back and access them at a later time. That's especially handy for when it's coming close to those exams. As you notice, there's a microphone mounted on each table here in the lecture hall. That is put there for two reasons. One being that any question that is asked during the lecture is put into the recording. Also, if a question is being asked in the back of the classroom, everyone else in the front of the room or wherever they might be sitting can hear what question is being asked. In here, you also have the ability to attend lectures virtually as well. So you can stay home in those cozy pajamas worn by the fire on those wintry mornings. Also, there is no set dress code for our lectures. So you can come in a suit and tie, basketball shorts and a t-shirt, or prom dress, whatever you're the most comfortable in. You have the ability to make this place sort of like your second home. You're allowed to bring purses, backpacks, blankets, snacks and drinks in here to make it feel more personalized so you're very comfortable in here during your lecture. Hello, I'm Mark Kinson, Admissions Counselor Senior here at the West Virginia School of Osteopathic Medicine. We are here at the Frederick W. Smith Science Building, and through these doors is one of the largest anatomy labs in osteopathic medical education. The education you receive in the Frederick W. Smith Science Building is supported by the Human Gift Registry donors. Through their generous and selfless gift to WVSOM, you will receive in-depth and comprehensive education about human anatomy. In this lab, one of the unique components of this is your entire cohort can be in the lab at one time. Our lab can accommodate approximately 50 donors, and this allows us to provide an investment in your education to where you have an intimate interaction with human anatomy and translation to clinical application. During your time in this lab, you'll be partnered with approximately five to seven peers and have intimate access to the faculty and table trainers to provide you a comprehensive education. The skills and knowledge that you will learn here will allow you to translate your basic science knowledge of the organ systems into clinical application. A unique aspect of the Human Anatomy Lab is the state-of-the-art ventilation and natural lighting. This allows students to spend quality time in the lab without distraction and promote learning. Additionally, the lab is accessible 24-7, so this allows students to accommodate the material to their learning preferences and allows more opportunities to reinforce the education that they receive. WVSOM research and sponsored programs provide students the opportunity to engage with faculty in academic research. This is typically done the summer between first and second year. However, we've had over 130 students participate in the research during third and fourth years. All of these elements from the human gift donors to the way the lab is structured and the way that we facilitate the education provides foundational knowledge for you to learn the organ systems of the human body and translate that knowledge of anatomy to your clinical application. Welcome to the James R. Stuckey Library. So in the library, students have access to quite a range of um, textbooks um, on the shelves. Also, students have access to um, a pretty large collection of online databases with uh, books, articles, and journals. Um, some students just come to the library to study, um, so there are several places to grab a chair and sit down and um, study. We've got some couches over there, other cubicles and tables. Um, students also can access a room off to the back as well as um, an open study area upstairs. So if you come on back, we'll take a look at those. 
So there are several other um, spots to set up shop and, and study here um, in this room. Um, this is a good quiet study room for students. There are copiers and printers available if students want to print off um, study materials. This room as well as a room I'll show you upstairs um, is 24 hour access for students um, with a, um, a card, a key card they can swipe into the building from outside, enter this, build, enter this room as well as the room upstairs. Now the actual library itself does close, but again students can come into this room pretty much any time, day or night. Um, now we can go upstairs and I'll show you that room. All right, so finally we have the upstairs study area. Um, it's a good open study room. Um, students can access the rooms from the doors in the back with a key card um, anytime, day or night. There are more cubicles, chairs, couches, and tables. Um, so it's just a great quiet study area and students really do enjoy um, studying here. Welcome to the Osteopathic Clinical Skills Lab. Here you will learn one of the most unique components of osteopathic medical education. By using your hands to treat your patients, you will learn the skills of osteopathic manipulative treatment, or OMT. Allowing you to work with your peers and table trainers, you are able to gain an intimate knowledge of functional anatomy and the basic concept of how we view the body as a unit and the reciprocal relationship of structure and function. Over the course of your first two years, you'll have approximately 200 hours in this lab. During that time, you'll be broken into small groups to where you'll learn the techniques uh, with your peers and the instructors, where we'll be able to have one instructor for every eight students. One benefit of the way that our lab is structured is we have the technology that allows us to highlight the nuances of certain techniques. Thanks to the cameras and the monitors in the room, where you're able to highlight the very small nuances of manipulations on maybe the hand or the foot or the back of the head, the cranial manipulations. This allows you, regardless of where you are in the lab, to have a comprehensive experience with the education and the curriculum of osteopathic manipulative treatment. Hey guys, welcome in to our Founders Activity Center, the home of our fitness facilities and our basketball gym. Let's pop in here and take a look. So as you can see in here, we have a wide array of equipment in here for our students to have access to. Over here on this side, you'll see that we have cardio machines, state of the art, for all of our students to come in here and use. Over here on the other side of the fitness facility, we have weight machines and free weights, the whole nine yards over here. The benefit about this facility is the only individuals that have access into here are students, faculty, staff, and the West Virginia State Police. You have 24-7 access into here, so you can come in here at 7 a.m., 4 a.m., 11 o'clock at night. In both the left and the right side, we have shower facilities inside the restrooms, so you come in here in the morning, get a workout in before your day starts, and go about your day. As I mentioned, we have a basketball gym in here, so let's walk back here and take a look at that. Here on the hardwood, you and your friends can come in here, have a game of pickup basketball, or participate in one of the many different intramural teams that we have here on the campus of WVSOM. Ranging from volleyball, to basketball, soccer, softball, and many others. Our last stop on our tour is here in the main building. The main building has our administrative offices, our registrar, and financial aid are also located here. We have some services for students to access that are free of charge and also anonymous to help you kind of transition into med school or if you're having any type of difficulty with being under too much stress or you feel like you're struggling with your tests. It's called the Aspire Office. It's the Academic Support and Intervention Resources Department. They're here to provide you assistance with study taking skills, tutoring, and they are a great resource for you to be able to utilize. 
Well, I hope that you enjoyed your time with us on campus and being able to explore all 67 acres and fantastic facilities that we do have to offer you here at WVSOM. Thank you again for joining us. We would love to host you in person here on campus, and if you would like to do so, you can register for a campus tour via our website. Also know that the Office of Admissions is here to answer any and all of your questions, so feel free to reach out and contact us. Thanks for joining.